Hi, everybody. Welcome to Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. I'm your host, Emmy Hernandez. No matter your age, it's never too late or too early to start thinking about making your money work for you. But where to start? That's why I'm here. I'm excited to lay out some key steps to help you save, grow, and invest your money in the smartest way possible. For your retirees out there who likes to give to donation and charitable causes, you like to know what a QCD is and how it can help you with your taxes. When we come back, right here on Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. Americans are very generous when it comes to giving to charity. And there's so many organizations out there that are doing good causes. And today I have a special guest with me, Karen Robinson from Family Promise of the San Gabriel Valley. Hi, Karen. Hi, thank you, Emmy, for inviting me. Oh, thanks for being here. I mean, you are, you know, one of the most active lady I know <laughs> out there in the community. You work with um, Family Promise. Yes. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what this organization do? I love to talk about Family Promise because I think it's really important, particularly today with so much homelessness mm -hmm. uh, in the news. So Family Promise is an organization that started uh, in the 80s on the East Coast, and I am part of the nonprofit in the San Gabriel Valley mm -hmm. that is an affiliate of the national organization. Our goal is to support child, homeless children and help their families to regain stable housing. Mm -hmm. So that's our overriding goal. We have two programs. One is our foundational congregation network, which is a, a collection of church congregations and possibly temples in some of the uh, affiliates, where they provide uh, safe sleeping space, all the meals, and they have uh, congregation volunteers that provide support for the families in the evenings so that we don't have a brick and mortar shelter. We have a, a collection of congregations uh -huh. that really assist the families. Oh, okay. And then our goal is to provide uh, a day center where they have laundry and shower facilities, case management services. It's where we do our business with the families. Now, most of our families are working if they're not working, we assist them with getting resources so that they can get gainfully employed uh, and then help them to overcome the barriers to getting back into stable housing. Well, that's great. It's not like a good program. It now, how, how does this family come to you or how do you find them? They come to us in various ways. Sometimes uh, one of our graduate families may recognize somebody mm -hmm. in the community, like one of our uh, moms who was working noticed a co-worker mm -hmm. with a four-year-old that was sleeping in her car, so she referred her to us. Many of them come through what is called the uh, L.A. County Info Line or uh, some of the other homeless providers that can't provide shelter maybe, mm -hmm. but you know, provide other services like food banks, etc. cetera. Yeah. Well, this is a very good program, you know, and then homelessness is really a, a real challenge in this day. People come into this situation from so many, many they courses. Do. Now, because your organization are pretty, you know, they are pretty big and have wide reaches. How do you do the funding on this? Our funding actually at this point has come mainly from just individuals, uh, people that find out about Family Promise that have a heart for homeless families and homeless children. Uh, so a lot of them are just plain old regular folks like you and I mm -hmm. that uh, choose to donate to certain charities. Okay. We have some foundations, a couple of foundations. We have a little uh, uh, grant from one of these cities uh, and, you know, that's pretty much how we have funded our services. Uh huh. Okay. Good. Yeah. You know, when we're talking about donations, I know that's like since you work with churches, congregations, right. so a lot of people donate through that as well. Exactly. And more or less, when you do this donation, it's kind of like a side benefit, right? Mm -hmm. That you get the tax write-off yes. or tax de deductions on that. Yes. So I'm sure that many, many of your members or supporter, um, also taking that, you give them yes. the receipt 
need to do the um, the write off, right? Yes, we are a five hundred one c three, so we you know the donations are tax deductible. Right, right. So you are like yeah. one of the qualified organizations right. doing that now. Um, I know that because it's 2018 now, and the beginning of this year, there's many tax law changes, yes. you know, and that have some impact, they not do. a direct impact to the charitable giving, but maybe a side effect. So I want to talk a little bit about that. So maybe you can share this information with the, you know, your supporter as well. Um, as you know, that the item I deductions and the standard deduction yes. that people can use for, um, you know, tax when they file the income tax. This year, two thousand um, coming up 2018, this mm -hmm. year, the standard deduction almost double, uh. right? So, like, for single person, now you can write up a standard deduction about, like, 12600 For married couple, it's 26000 plus mm -hmm. if you're 65 or over. And I think many of your... Um, supporter probably yes. retiree right yes yes so in the past when you give it to the organization nonprofit, you have to be able to itemize in order to write these off right, right? so you kind of build up on the itemized deduction where you're filing schedule a yes. but because now the standard deduction is a lot higher almost double from the prior years we think that's going to be many, many more people that's just going to do yes. a standard right. instead of itemized. Yes. So I don't know. I, I heard that many organizations kind of starting to kind of worry a little bit because if people go way to the um, standard deduction, mm -hmm. they may not need this itemized item to reduce their taxes anymore and they right. may donate less. So do you have any concern about that? We are concerned. We, you know, we don't know how it's going to work out. Um, we know that we have a lot of loyal supporters and people that are in the retirement age. Mm -hmm. So, um, like for myself, you know, I've included Family Promise as one of my uh, legacy kinds of uh, charities. But we don't know how it's going to work out this mm -hmm. year. We're, we're all waiting to find out, and our board of directors is uh, actively pursuing you know, what options we will have to continue to keep serving our community in the way we have been. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I want to share uh -huh. some information with you, and this may help you as well, because um, recently, Wall Street Journal actually written an article about QCD. Okay, mm -hmm. QCD is a short for Qualified Charitable um, Distribution. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is something that if you are a retiree and you have a retirement plan, you can actually use the money from the retirement plan and give it to um, your nonprofit or charitable organization and you still have some tax benefit as well, no matter, you know, you do a standard deduction or itemized deduction. Mm -hmm. So this might be something that you can kind of like, you know, give give out some information. Um, perhaps your people in, in your congregation have this type of retirement plan and they might be able to just continue doing that. That would be kind great. of tax benefit. You think that might be something helpful? Oh, I think that would be great information to share with our uh -huh. with our membership. Do you yourself um, have an, an IRA or retirement plan? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So have you heard about this thing before? I had briefly heard a little, you know, an allusion to it more okay. than actually specific information. So it's uh -huh. good to know yeah. that there's some solid information out there. Oh, great. Then, yeah, um, yeah when we come back, we're going to talk more about that and I'll give you all the specific of how to do that as well. Great. Reuniting parents with their children in sometimes days, not weeks, months, or in some cases years. When it's time to battle the social worker and the juvenile court system, give me a call. We can help you. Call 888-888-6582 or visit us on the web at helpfightcps.com. Let's get your children back now.
Welcome back to Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. Still right here with me, Karen Robertson from Family Promise of the San Gabriel Valley. In the last segment, Karen, we were talking about, you know, how people giving donation to your organization to help mm-hmm. homelessness. Yes. Um, but because of tax law changes in 2018, we're a little concerned that if people don't need the uh, deduction for their itemization anymore, there would be maybe less support. Right. So um, I, I said that I wanted to point out that if you are uh, dealing with uh, supporter who are retiree and um, have some retirement account, retirement plan account, you may be able to use this, you know, um, tax route from the IRS that can help out with this organized um, donation as well. Okay, this um, technique or the rule, actually not the technique, it's, it's a rule uh-huh. called the QCD, which mm-hmm. is Qualified Charitable Deduction. Okay, what it what a QCD is is um, a distribution or a withdrawal from an individual retirement account like an IRA. Okay, okay. but it's a qualified because it's sent directly to the nonprofit or charitable organization directly, where you, as the owner of the IRA or the retirement account, do not touch that money. So it come okay. out from the account and go directly Correct. to the charity. Okay. Okay, that's what it a qualified distribution. Now, if you know, you, ha- you said you have an IRA yourself, right? So individual retirement account, um, just for the viewer to know that as well. When you have an IRA, it's growth tax deferred when you were working, accumulating the money, right? Yes. But once you turn 70 and a half, now you cannot defer that tax anymore. It's mandatory right. by the IRS to say that you have to, you must take a minimum distribution every year. The RMD require minimum distribution that calculate based on your life expectancy every year because that money have to come out and become taxable, go on mm-hmm. your income tax return, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Now, many of my clients, Okay, and I'm sure many of your supporters as well, they're retired, they have good income, they have pensions, and they really don't need the money from the IRA or the retirement account. They was like, well, you know, I don't need it, but I still have to take it out and pay tax for it. Now, this is where the QCD come into play. Because if you use the QCD rule, you take the money and it go directly to the charitable organization, you do not have to report that amount of money that you take out as income for the year and it can also be used to satisfy that mandatory distribution as well so how do you feel about that that sounds like a possible alternative for Mm -hmm. a you know for our donors to to consider it's great yeah so because you know like for example right give give Uh an example that if you have an ira account and you're Mm -hmm. 70 and a half Mm -hmm. um and let's say your mandatory distribution Uh this year calculate based on your life expectancy let's say six thousand dollars okay uh-huh. um if you don't use the qcd you would have to take out a six thousand dollar and report and it taxes. as a taxable income on mm-hmm. that but if you send that money directly to family promise mm-hmm. you know 501c3 organization then that six thousand consider satisfy your mandatory distribution it you and you do not have it doesn't count as a um, income on your okay. on on your tax return, you still do have to report it though because the um, the custodian of your IRA will give you a 1099. However, when you do your tax, you're gonna say a QCD right next to you know where you report that income. Uh huh. So then it become no tax. It become like it doesn't count toward a regular income right. tax at that time. So I I, I you know want to make sure that you kind of like share this with uh with your your supporter, your congregation congregation. So um that way they can start doing this. Are you that's great. Yeah. I'll have them watch smart money. Ah, well that's one way, but then you have any other plan maybe that you kinda like uh just right, announce that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you have any um type of activity or um, fundraising or anything that coming soon? We actually, in the spring, we normally have an event called Empty Bowls mm-hmm. where people uh, register, they come, they pick out the handmade 
uh, soup bowl of their choice. And then we have restaurants that donate delicious soups and they get to choose what soup they want. And it's just a reminder that some people have empty bowls as a matter of circumstance rather than choice. Uh -huh. So they get to take the bowl home with them. And many of them really cherish those bowls because they're beautiful. Right. I remember because yeah. I went that, you know, right. a couple years in a row and I got this little bowl yes. that I picked. It is really nice and it's yeah. very, very, yeah. So make it sure is. when it, when it get closing that time, you know, we'll probably want to announce that I we think. actually mm -hmm. usually have an information sharing uh, uh, some way to share information mm -hmm. at that event as well either a table or something where we can really hand out information about different things going on and this might be a good opportunity to share about a QCD as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The QCD is something that you wanted to share because uh -huh. um, you know, in a way many people said, mm -hmm. you know, I since I don't do I'm not going to do um, itemized right. deduction anymore mm -hmm. because of the new tax law that increased the level of standard deductions right. on mm -hmm. the 1040. Mm -hmm. So they may feel that, well, really, I mean, if I, I don't get the benefit of donate to the charitable mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. However, we still want to promote that if you have charitable mind, right, you like to do some right. good things, some, you want to continue doing that. And there's still a way for you yes. to do it and to get the tax benefit as well. And QCD an excellent way to yes, do that. Yes, and I think most of our donors are very loyal to our program. Mm -hmm. So I think that they would really welcome this opportunity. I have a question now. If, say, they're, they've been 70 and a half, yes. and they've been taking out what they're required to take out mm -hmm. each year, and then this year they want to change that. Can they change, or do they have to stick with uh, taking it out every year the way they did previously oh no Does not at sense? all they can always change the way they're taking okay. the, the distribution out um for example and that's a very good question because mm. for example when you um if you have you know the mandatory amount mm -hmm. right you don't actually know donate the whole thing for example like when i said that your mandatory distribution is six thousand uh -huh. dollars you don't have to give to a um, you know charity the whole six thousand dollars to qualify for qcd well, that's good information. you can only do yeah. partial you know so let's say i want to give three thousand or two thousand just mm -hmm. send an instruction mm -hmm. make sure though the way you do it you have to tell your custodian of your um, retirement account to send the money directly to that organization that you want to give okay, okay. so just sell two thousand send it over there and then the remaining four thousand you still can take it yourself so any okay. you know number you can do that um, however the IRS also look at it the first amount that come out from your um, retirement account supposed to satisfy your RMD first okay mm -hmm. so like um, if it later in the year and you already take out more than enough mm -hmm. then you are out luck. You're already done. Okay. So you basically, if you want to give to organization, like, you know, um, charity organization, you want to do it early, early okay. on. So mm -hmm. use that amount to qualify for the RMD. Okay. Because okay. if you already take the RMD out enough to satisfy, let's say this year you already take $6,000. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. And you already spent it. You can't claim you can't, that, right. you know, additional to right. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, that's a very good Great question. And also when we... Um, also, there's also a limitation. You can only do up to $100,000 in a year. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's it. You know, some, I know some yes, people I have know. a very big IRA account yeah. and they love to do good uh -huh. things so they can do more. However, um, yeah, mm -hmm. so there are some limitations to that also. And there's something else that I want to talk to you about, but we can take a little break here and when we'll come back, we'll talk a little bit more about this donation as well. Okay. live experience and that is just priceless for anybody trying to get into this industry. Tracy Leon. I think that any investment in Crown City News's program is a benefit to the community and to journalists starting out. And many more. Those folks and others are now working in their dream TV careers and you can too. We train kids, teens, and adults professional storytelling on TV and on social media. Call 626-344-8314 to join the International Media Training Center today. Still back here with me on Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. 
and Karen Robinson from Family Promise. Now, last segment we were talking about, you know, the donations mm -hmm. to charity and using the QCD or qualified charitable di um, distribution yes. from your IRA retirement plan in order to help out doing good cause, give yes. money to charity, nonprofit organization, right. and still get the tax benefit. Yes. So we're gonna expand that a little bit more. Um, your questions before before we take the break you say that you know um if you're already giving you know how much you have to give you can always give the entire amount of your mandatory distribution or give less but the maximum is a hundred thousand dollar per year also you need to be mindful of the um qualification Number one, you have to be, you must be 70 and a half or older, right? In order mm -hmm. to have that mandatory mm -hmm. distribution and using the QCD. You don't need to do itemized deduction on your tax return. That's a good thing. Whether you standard or itemize the QCD would work. Once you do the QCD, you need to make sure that you tell um, your custodian of the IRA to send the money directly to the nonprofit organization. It has to be a 501c3 mm -hmm. organization. Um, and that money cannot come through your hand first. So it's not like I can take the distribution right. and then write and a check. check. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can't do that. Um, so that way to, to qualify for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, some people ask me too, like, well, okay, if I already did QCD and I still do itemized deduction, can I write that off as well? What do you think? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> You're right on that. No, no, right? No double dip no, here. Right. Because if you don't report, I mean, a QCD is somewhere you don't report as a taxable right. income, so you cannot yes. write that amount off on an itemized deduction as well. You know, I don't yes. want, we don't want the IRS to come knock on right. your door exactly. for that. Okay, so don't do both. No double dip here. Um, so that's kind of the qualification pretty mm -hmm. much. And we want to make sure that, you know, we kind of like spread the words here out in, yeah. in the community. So I, I really think as a financial planner I have a lot of clients who are like to do good thing like to do mm -hmm. donations a lot and they always come to me like oh my god you know I don't think this year I'm gonna do that much because I don't have the tax benefit anymore uh -huh. but now with the QCD uh, or the retiree who has IRA uh -huh. should really get that themselves familiar with this yes, move really yes. quickly yeah um, you would mention that you also have some other questions on this as well um. Oh, do I? I'm good. I'm explaining everything. I so, think yeah. the one big question was whether they could change the way yes. they do the deductions. And uh -huh. you had answered that for me. So if if you're committed to one year taking the money out of your uh, IRA mm -hmm. and using it yourself, that's one thing. The next year you can all, always change and give either all of it or a portion of it through your custodian to a nonprofit. Yes, of course. So that's great to know because many people have been doing it one way and they didn't uh -huh. they don't know that they could switch and do it with the QCD. Yes, yes, of course, because this is all voluntary, yeah. you know, helping uh -huh. and doing some good things. So it's not mandatory right. that you have to give in into any particular organization uh -huh. only. Uh -huh. You can also change. And you can also do more than one right. organization too. Okay. Okay. So um But the max is one hundred one hundred thousand and that's the for all of them combined. Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. okay. So um, also, you got to be careful, you know, we're dealing with the charitable organization too. I know like like your organization, uh, you know, it's legit, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you are a 501c3 organization. But I heard so many bad things about, especially when it gets to closer to holiday season, you get so yes. many solicitation coming in, right, from everywhere. And some of these turn out to be scams. Some of them do. Some of them are not really um, fully vetted nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So, you you know, they might have a good sounding name to their organization, but it really does mean you need to do a little bit of homework on that. Right. So there are ways to check to make sure an organization is legitimate. In, in California, for instance, uh, as a nonprofit, we need to file with the uh, with the government what is called a 990 form and that really 
tells how we've who's donated mm -hmm. and how we have spent mm -hmm. that money so that they can tell that we're you know a legitimate organization there are also some organ some places online that you could check mm -hmm. there's charity navigator uh, guide star those are two websites that really keep information uh, and data about nonprofits so you could go there and make sure that they're um, a legitimate 501c3. That's a very good, good um, information. Yeah. So GuideStar and, and Charity, Charity Navigator, Navigator are two of them. Uh -huh. So you can go on there and maybe search for the name and there will yes. be a profile coming yes. out. Oh, uh -huh. that's a very good 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 plan yeah. and also when you mentioned that form 990 mm -hmm. this is something that kind of like a irs tax yes form? okay so um how do people get the information on that can they ask like let's say if i get a phone call from an organization and say hey you want to donate to blah 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 and uh, we are a nonprofit. can i ask for a copy of form 990 i think you it's online and it's available oh, to good. the public i think you could just google it probably ah, okay yeah. of the any particular organization yeah well, that's that's really good mm -hmm. because this, these days there's so many organizations, mm -hmm. especially they they um target. Let's say they have many names about children, right. about homelessness, and I know that it's sometimes it's horrible because you donate. Mm -hmm. Some of them may be yeah doing some good cause, mm -hmm. but majority of money it's not going to the final destination. Exactly. It end up in somebody else's management pocket. In a different way, yes. It's not good. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, that's a very good information. Um, also, I also want to make sure that, you know, especially when it comes time to fall for holiday season and you get so many um, solicitations, mm -hmm. I always tell my client that it's nice to give a lot, but it helped to also to be organized and perhaps maybe just pick two or three of your favorite, you mm -hmm. know, charitable organization and then donate more to that one instead of do a little bit here and there everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to tax time, let's say even if you, um, let's say you do um, charitable, org um, I'm sorry, do uh, itemized deduction, you still have a tally of that, I kind yes. of a receipt for that, right? So right. Um, it should be well organized, so maybe pick one or two or three. Where you can make an impact. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a good word too, mm -hmm. make an impact, right? Mm -hmm. Because I mean, yeah, you know, you, you especially yeah. um, in a smaller community, and you, mm -hmm. can, you can do that. You can really see how the work gets done. Right. So I want to give you a little time to tell um, the audience, the viewer, about your organization and how they can reach out to you. Okay. Yes, we have a website. They can go to our website, which is www.familypromisesgv.org, and there they can find the latest information about our organization and how they could donate to our organization if they show, if they so please. Our main interest is that every child should have a home. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Karen. Um, thanks for being here Thank you. today. That's it for today's episode of Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. As a financial advisor, I'm here to help you. So if you have any questions or comments, send it to me by email to emmy at ehfinancial.com. Don't forget, if you miss any part of the show, you can watch us again on ehfinancial.com or crowncitynetwork.com. Remember, being smart with your money is easy, and you can do it. Thanks for watching. See you next time right here on Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez.